Right, well, let's go back to what I was talking about at the top of the show because I've often said here, haven't I, that free speech isn't free. It's something that's been protected in blood by Australians in generations past who fought in our name, wearing our uniform under our flag to give us a sort of liberty today, free speech today, that sadly I think many of us take for granted and even worse, are failing to defend. Even in my lifetime, the change in what we can say, write, even read has been diminished and the threat just seems to be accelerating. My next guest, new to the Federal Parliament, has found herself in the eye of the storm and to use a famous phrase, she's not for turning. In July, Tasmanian Liberal Senator Claire Chandler wrote a piece for the Hobart Mercury newspaper about the rise of the cancel culture and attempts to silence people, as I said, like JK Rowling, expressing her views. In Rowling's case, as said at the top of the show, in defence of women. Yet in these very sorry times, defending women and the gains of women are now turned upside down to somehow mean it's an attack against transgender people. One of the senator's views that the women's sport, women's change rooms and women's toilets should continue to be for individuals of the female sex. For these views, a complaint has been lodged against her under Section 17 of Tasmania's Anti-Discrimination Act. Senator Claire Chandler joins me now from Hobart. Thank you for your time, Claire Chandler. Welcome to the show. It's extraordinary this action being taken against you. Sarah Bolt, who's the Anti-Discrimination Commissioner, wants you to front a compulsory mediation session with the complainant. What do you think will come out of it? Oh, look, I'm not entirely sure what can come out of it, Peter. Um, I'm certainly not going to be backing down on my views around women's sports and women's sex-based rights, nor will I be apologising for holding a view and advocating for a view that the majority of Australians agree with. I mean, I've received countless pieces of feedback from women across Australia, indeed across the world, who share my views and are deeply concerned at the action that I am being subjected to because of the concerns um, around free speech, as you said in your remarks just then. And it's also the defence of women's rights. I mean, there's even this um, breakaway now happening on the left between the transgender activists and, you know, hard left feminists who for a very long time have said women have a right to equality women have an entitlement to women's sport being you know as well paid and well supported as men uh, the right to a room of their own uh, the right to be able to go to a toilet and be you know safe and, and conscious that only other women are using that space particularly if there's you know, children there as well Claire this has got to be you know almost madness if you could go back 20 or 30 years to be having this sort of debate people then would say what on earth are you talking about I think even going back a couple of years, Peter, it wouldn't be um, remarkable or controversial at all to be advocating for um, women's spaces to be preserved for biological women. But this is the ridiculous situation we find ourselves in, where unelected bureaucrats and these anti-discrimination tribunals are able to um, put people through the legal ringer, such as myself, such as Archbishop Julian Porteous um, for uh, just practising his faith, such as students at the Queensland University of technology for posting comments on Facebook in an effort to shut down debate about genuine public policy matters. It is deeply concerning in terms of the effects that this is going to have on free speech in this country if this keeps happening. What do you feel about the erosion of freedom of speech more broadly, you know, beyond just this issue? Oh, I think it's, uh, it is an absolutely a matter of concern for all Australians. I mean, I referenced some cases just then. Julian Porteous, the students at Queensland University of Technology, Bill Leake and his cartoons in the newspapers. We have seen uh, steadily for the last few years now the anti-everything brigade, the vocal minority, getting up in arms when they um, take offence at something. And particularly these are matters that the majority of Australians agree in, particularly in my case, um, when I'm talking about advocating for sex-based rights for women. So this is um, a, a broad concern. And in talking about the Tasmanian Anti-Discrimination Act, I think it is important to note that this is one of the most restrictive pieces of free speech legislation um, in this country. The Tasmanian state Liberal government made attempts to change it back in uh, 2017 that weren't able to get through our upper house in our Tasmanian parliament. But I'd certainly like to see, particularly after the situation that I'm currently experiencing, some more efforts in that part 
um, of the Tasmanian government to try and uh, actually get some better developments here and ensure that this legislation strikes the right balance. Clearly, at the moment, it does not. Uh, earlier in the year, the Australian Academy of Science, they altered their de definition of woman to anyone who identifies as a woman. This is a science, our preeminent uh, you know, body of science scholarship. Now, I interviewed a scientist, a member of the organisation at the time, who was really angry about this. Um, all of this is being done in the name of women, but women's voices are being lost in this debate. Yours is certainly not lost. But this is a, a campaign by stealth, because until that story appeared, this person told me on the show that there wasn't much debate about the definitional change. Why is that? Oh, look, I, I think um, you, you've raised a really important point here, Peter, and that is that these views, particularly around women's sex-based rights, are based on uh, clear scientific evidence. I mean, the advocacy that I have been doing around women's sport and ensuring that women's sport is safe and fair for biological women is absolutely based on the science. I mean, we've seen the research that World Rugby has produced that shows the clear disparity in terms of strength uh, between women on the sporting field and trans women who uh, would be biologically male. So absolutely the science backs this up. But like I say, it's just this left activism that um, the vocal minority that tries to capture the debate publicly, particularly because, like I say, they are so vocal about it. You only have to look at what's happening on Twitter to see that. Well, absolutely. What, what do you make of a Perth bookshop now banning or phasing out, they say, JK Rowling books, including Harry Potter and everything else, just because uh, they say they want to make the place, the shop, a, a, safer, a safer space? Look, I think that any small business is allowed to run their business the, the way that they want to. And if this bookkeeper, uh, book, bookshop owner rather, makes the decision that they don't want to sell uh, any books by JK Rowling, I suppose that they're well within their right to do that. But what does concern me is the logic that that decision has been based upon, which is that what JK Rowling says is transphobic and that by selling her books you are promoting transphobia. I mean, I find nothing transphobic in her comments in advocating for sex based rights for women. Uh, so I, I do worry that there is somewhat of a disconnect there. Absolutely. Senator Chandler, more strength to your arm. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. Thanks for having me, Peter.